Welcome to the Winter Fancy Food Show. We've come here to find out what's healthy. It was the hippies in the 60s who realized that they were putting chemicals and pesticides in their bodies and it didn't feel natural, it didn't feel healthy, it didn't feel nourishing. So we've come here 50 years later to find out what happened to that seed that was planted for healthy living, for organic foods, and for eating in harmony with nature and our own body, which is part of nature, right? So we're here to find out what's good, what's healthy. We want products that are plant-based, whole food, no sweeteners of any kind, so we can nourish our body. So we're gonna talk to some of the food producers and see what's on at Fancy Food 2018. Let's check it out. Aaron here is the Chief Granola Officer with Grandio Real Grain Oats. So we love the concept. It comes straight from the hippie mentality. Yeah. What's so hippie about it anyway? Well, I mean, we're a bunch of granolas and we call ourselves real granolas. It's a little double entendre, you know, like everybody, you know, that eats granola or loves to hike or cares about the planet or passionate about organic like myself. Mm. You know, uh, I, I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this have been called a granola. But then we also make real granola, right? So we're not using any sugar. Like most of the other granolas out there, second ingredient sugar. For us, we sweeten with honey, maple syrup, a lot less sweetened than the other guys. 100% organic, yeah. real nuts, whole nuts, you know, like, and just real fruits, a lot of like, um, you know, partnerships that we had through the years, you know, so it's, it started in 1979 by two women, and then my business partner and I bought it in the late 90s, okay. and, uh, you know, we just always kept it real, we've got an awesome team of 28 people, we actually mix it by hand in small batches, so our biggest batch size is like 50 pounds, wow. so it's it's the real deal, and, you know, we, uh, we actually uh, revitalized a, uh, an old school, that was like abandoned, like in rural Maine. And then on, on the ball fields where the kids used to play, we put 288 solar panels. So we removed all the petrochemicals from there. So everything's heated, cooled, you know, trucked, you know, like, like everything's like all done like solar. So you're serious. You're yeah, no, actually like, doing yeah, yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to make a difference, you know, you know, it's beautiful. Like, I'm pretty thankful. I've been doing this now 18 years. Mm. And I'm having a blast. Oh, well, and it's fun that you embrace the, the whole hippie persona yeah. in what you're doing, literally yeah. the granolas. So I own a 76 VW bus that I've had now since 1993, driven it to Mexico, I've driven it all over the country. My business partner's got a 74 and uh, you know, it's a blast. I mean, so we really, like for us, it's like, oh yeah, you know, you see buses like marketed VW buses is like, oh, it's a marketing shot. But for us, it's like, no, I've actually owned mine for over 20 years, you know, and, and Nats, I think, had his almost 30 years. So it's just authenticity yeah. for us, you know. You're keeping it legitimate across yeah, the board. Yeah, yeah, there's no BS here, you know. I've managed to corral the one person at this fancy food show besides myself who is committed to eating no sweeteners whatsoever. Addison, wow. I am. My kindred spirit. I totally. <laughs> I've cut uh, all sugar out of my diet unless it's naturally occurring yes. and fruits or vegetables. So I, I look at a label in the grocery store and I say if there's added sugar to it, I, I really don't want it. Um, so I work with a, a pasta sauce brand here, the Jersey Tomato Co. And it's one of the few tomato sauces or salsas that doesn't add sugar to the product. Why do you do it? Well, I mean, we, we believe that naturally occurring sugars and fruits and vegetables taste great and they don't need any other sugar added to it. And um, it, it, sugar sometimes gets in the way of the natural flavors. And so when we cut the sugar out, the natural flavors shine through. It's a beautiful thing. It Let sure the natural is. flavors shine through. It's totally. there. Yeah, it's not a sacrifice. It's not at all. Yeah. And um, it's better for your body. Sugars that are added really are not great for you. How are you guys making out with doing a product without sugar? Is yeah. it working? Are people buying it? Well, yes, they are. And we find that um, when grocers and retailers look at the product, the two things that they like most about the Jersey Tomato Co, Co products are no added sugar and naturally lower sodium. So fighting all the added sugars and salts yeah. and products, um, it, it's becoming more of a trend. So buyers like it at the retailers and in the end the consumers are looking for that as well. It's nice to see this, uh, this awakening and this reemergence of a dedication to actually healthy things, truly healthy, not yeah. healthy, propaganda healthy, that we're sold is healthy. Yeah, that, that's right. And, and you know, we're seeing more and more consumers 
pick up the bottle or a product, whatever it is, and turn around and look at the, in, at the ingredients. And in the food industry, we, we, mm. we use a term called a clean label. Mm. And a clean label means there's not words you can't pronounce, there's not a lot of added things besides you know, the four or five ingredients that make a product what it is. And we are seeing the proliferation of clean labels in the industry, and it's becoming more important to, to the end consumer. We're here with Dr. Jonathan Karp, who's representing Miracle Noodle, who's going to give us the whole rundown of this beautiful plant-based food. Jonathan, yeah. thank you for your time and representing something healthy, finally. It's true. You know, part of our company is really that we believe that foods from the past are actually the key to our future. Mm. And this is a very traditional pasta. It's been eaten in Japan for over 1,400 years. Mm. It was invented by Buddhist monks and has always been known to be a healthy product. And what makes it special is that it's 97% water and 3% fiber. And so it doesn't make your blood sugar go up, it stabilizes your blood sugar, absorbs cholesterol, and it's just a very traditional plant-based product that we've sort of westernized in a sense, sort of brought it over here. In Japan, it's a staple. And you know, a lot of times you just need to look into a culture and there are all kinds of solutions to problems that we face if we just look back in the past. And this is one of those things that sort of has been rediscovered in a sense. For, J for Japanese, it's nothing, but for us, it's something special. Mm. And you can enjoy pasta again and rice without having to worry about blood sugar elevations. And it's just a healthy alternative to pasta. Yeah, I want to love my food. This is the problem is that I eat things and I just regret that I hate them. I hate myself for eating them. And then, as you know, it's yeah. so difficult to find something that is truly wholesome. That's right. In the true sense. It's true. And as I said before, sometimes we just need to look back and you know what our great grandparents were eating and those were wholesome foods they didn't have any of these sort of newfangled ingredients they were just eating pure foods and I think the future is reclaiming that history you know and presenting it in a way that it's exciting and that's sort of what we were trying to do let's reclaim that history of thriving and take it to the future with all we know now and yeah. write a new story one in which we can all thrive that's right yeah it's totally it exactly Leanna Werner Gray You've written 10-minute recipes. You've written the Earth Diet. I think yeah. you probably know some about food, so we love your qualifications. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm definitely a foodie, for sure. Yeah, and now you're essentially representing Explore Cuisine. Yes, this is one of my favorite brands for many reasons. It's gluten-free pasta, and it's just a way for us to be able to enjoy pasta, but in a much healthier way. More high of I, we're not left feeling so bloated, we have more energy. Yeah, yeah. and so, you know, we're, we're tying together that seed that was planted in the 60s when they, the counterculture people recognized that we want something more natural that feels more consistent with this natural being that we are. Yes. And it, really, we're seeing half a century later how that through line has blossomed into this massive cultural shift yes. in how we look at what we eat. Yeah. Like, can you speak to that? What do you What do you see from your yeah. vantage point? <laughs> well, okay, so I'm 30. I grew up in Australia, and so I've seen the um, the food industry and the health industry just it's been mind blowing because I've seen such a decline with cancer. It started with my grandfather. That was the first time I heard about cancer when I was 12 years old, and right now, like, we're in a in a sickness epidemic, we're in a cancer epidemic. I mean, so many people are overweight, bloated, have digestive issues, have cancer, have thyroid issues. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So I think we're just pressing consciousness right now of like, what is a healthy being? What is a healthy person? And is it possible to be healthy in every single moment? Because I do believe that that's what's possible to us. In every single moment, I believe we're able to be in that healthy state where we don't have sickness, we don't have cancer, we don't have heaviness. So I do think that we're going through a major detox right now. Like humanity, the earth and human beings, we're going through a detox and we're cleansing out all of the stuff that's made us sick all of the chemicals, you know, we're realizing there's only so much our human body can handle. There's only so many chemicals we can put into our body before we have a health issue. Where do you think we've been led astray the most, really? <laughs> <laughs> I think it started in the 60s when GMOs first started, when they started to develop genetically modified organisms. And I think we were led astray because we were led to believe that GMOs were going to be okay for us and healthy for us and also help you know, hunger issues and help businesses to make more money, we're spending less. So I think we were kind of fell into this trap and this lie of that we can make food cheap, cheaply and that it would be okay. But 
it's turned out that it hasn't been okay and we've ended up having to pay for it later. Boy, so now you've aligned with a brand and a product that is there's no GMO anywhere near it, right? It's plant-based, it's organic, it's as yeah. it's clean as you could get of a food, right? Yeah, no GMOs, it's super clean, it's very high quality, it's made in an allergen-free facility, so it's just like super, super clean. As t far as a pasta goes, getting a gluten-free pasta, it's like, it's definitely one of the best on the market that's available to us in the entire world right now. So will anyone eat it? <laughs> it sounds pretty healthy, will anyone eat it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's healthy, but it also tastes really good, and that's key. Right, like it has to taste really good to get people like okay with eating it. So the brown rice fusilli, um, that one is the most like white pasta, so it tastes like white pasta. And parents can actually feed it to their kids, and you know they don't even know that they're eating gluten-free pasta made with rice. They think it's like traditional wheat pasta, so it's a great alternative. How about like the nutritional value? Is there any nutritional value in this stuff? Yeah, this stuff is so high in nutrition and so high in protein. For example, the um, this one. So this is the black bean spaghetti, okay. and this has 25 grams of protein per serving. Per serving, that's a lot. Eat a bowl and a half, you got your protein for the day. <laughs> right, right, exactly, yeah. So, um, yeah, very, very nutritious and just high in fiber and protein. Super clean. There's no ingredients in this that we have to worry about. God. So what's, what would be your, your best advice for people who really, they feel, they know in their heart, God, I want to get healthy, I want to do better, but they, they're in a trap of the culture that they're in, eating what they're eating, convenience, blah, 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 whatever. Right. What Okay, well, I would say do three things. Just give up three things. So one is gluten. So give up gluten. That just makes it so much easier to be healthy. And there's so many great alternatives these days, like the gluten-free pasta. So it makes it easier to go gluten-free so that we don't miss gluten. So that definitely helps to raise vibration right away, is like being free of the gluten. So number one, go gluten-free. The second thing I would say is give up refined sugar. And only focus on natural sugars, so honey, maple syrup, dates, and fruits. I mean, that's what our bodies were designed to be able to digest and process. Our bodies cannot process white sugar. They just cannot. And then the third thing, give up dairy. So go dairy-free. And dairy is also very hard on the body and um, just makes us feel heavy, creates mucus, it's inflammatory. So give up those three things and just find alternatives to all of your favorite um, foods. And that's what are in my books. They're full of like healthy junk food recipes, basically like cookie dough made with almond flour just to help people get off those cravings for junk food. Baby steps, wean them off. Yeah, baby steps, and it's a process. Yeah, it can take years and years and years to reprogram the body and the chemistry in the body and have the cells start craving healthier foods. But that's the cool thing about the healthy path is it does get easier and easier. Like every single day and every single year, it gets easier and easier to crave healthy foods and want healthy foods. Well, a choice and an effort becomes a habit. And next thing you know, it's your lifestyle and you're in and it and you're, you're feeling in good. It and it's easy. Yeah, you have so much energy. It's amazing. Yeah. It it's does. Teresa with The Organic Pantry. What are you making here? So we, um, right now we currently make flaxseed crackers and we also make flaxseed granola. Everything certified organic, gluten-free, vegan, plant-based, no grains, no dairy, no oil. Totally good for you. And don't and you have delicious. A, and, del well, and no added sugar, ever. No added sugar, ever. Ever. So we make granola and the only sweetener we use is date paste. Can I, usually we save the hug for the end, but I, I just... This woman is speaking our language. Like, let's evolve beyond a world of needing sweeteners to survive. Exactly. So basically, the only sweetness comes from natural dates. Dates. And so because we use, at home. We use the um, flax seeds, which is high in fiber, it's basically only four grams of sugar. And when you counterbalance that with the fiber, it's only one. Negligible. Exactly. It's a beautiful thing. Why are you trying to sell something that is actually healthy? Because we want to make food that is actually real and nutritious and gives people energy and strength. So we want to add to your life, not take away from it. What are you, from the Bay Area or something? <laughs> You're just a hippie at heart, right? <laughs> Thank you. It's not all we needed. It's, and we it's have true. a brand ambassador who's an Olympian. This is Kara Kohler. Beautiful, so. Kara. So are you, you a big fan of the product? Or? Of course, yeah. I mean, I ran into Teresa at an event like this and just was raving about her product and was like, can I work for you or help you pass out crackers? I love your crackers. They're healthy. They're simple. 
and that's that's the food I look for. <laughs> healthy, training. simple. Healthy, training. simple things that will keep me energetic in all my training. So. Well, there you go. A portrait of health and vitality and fitness, and someone who is actually eating something healthy. Yep, very important to me. Let me ask you this. It seems like people almost need sugar in their food to be willing to buy it, to have the impetus to buy it. How are you making out, you know, providing the public with something that is actually nourishing? Are you, what kind of response are you getting? Well, I think um, people are actually starting to look for things that don't have sugar. So it's the absence from when, you, um, uh, especially with millennials, they're reading the labels and saying, I don't want those things that have processed foods. I don't want additives. And they realize that sugar actually is poison. And so I think more and more the public is getting educated on what is real food and what's real nutrition, and that's what they're looking for. Dr. Sylvie Charles, <laughs> the brainchild behind Just Ate Syrup. syrup. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, so Just Ate Syrup is made from organic California dates. That's the only ingredient. Um, it's very important to me to be able to harness that nutritional power of dates and turn it into something that you could use in coffee, tea, on your breakfast, um, and really have a lower glycemic index higher vitamin and mineral content than any sugar alternative, and a higher antioxidant value as well. How's it going so far? Are people responding to yeah, that kind of thing? People are really responding. Um, we launched just in September and have already grown super fast. Um, Ten stores in San Francisco um, and throughout these two days have picked up 20 new stores, so it's been really exciting. Congratulations yeah. to the future of food, to finally doing something that actually is growing towards a healthy, thriving population. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, as a doctor, I felt I like couldn't go home with my patients and watch what they were eating. So I just really wanted to attack the problem from a different angle. Yeah. Bravo to you for finding solutions, pursuing your passion, going beyond just each patient you treat yeah. and providing potentially millions of people with an alternative. Thank you so much. I'm super excited about it. The way I look, like to think of it is that I've evolved beyond, consciously, I've chosen to evolve beyond sweeteners, beyond sugar, beyond all the sweeteners. But my doctor who runs the Preventive Medical Center, Marin, he's a very forward-thinking doctor, he tells me that stevia, I've heard it said stevia, pronounced here as well, stevia, is, is the one thing that is actually okay. You're, you, Carol, you started this company. What, what do you, continue that conversation, like, what makes it okay? <laughs> uh, stevia is plant-based. It's it is a plant, uh, yeah. originally indigenous to Paraguay, but now cultivated the world over, uh, and it, it's a marvelous plant. It has um, now we know that there are over 50 different sweet compounds called glycosides that that impact sweetness, uh, impact taste, and um, we know which ones to extract and uh, that give the best flavor and um, uh, <laughs> we've won over 30 awards now for taste and innovation. That's more than any no-cal or low-cal sweetener all put together. Uh, and our guys know how to make it taste great. We have a variety of products. We have a large number of products in the pipeline to come out this year and the first quarter of the next. Um, and the best part of all this is that people have literally come to us, uh, be it by phone, in person, email, letter, to let us know that, that these sweeteners have changed their lives. And that's the way they put it, um, their life uh, or that of a loved one. And um, it's an opportunity to give people a choice about uh, what they take into their bodies and to maintain the quality of life, to have something fun and tasty as well. Uh, and. Um, so we're very proud of the quality of our products. Beautiful. Now it's become very popular to look at the glycemic index on the on the sweeteners. What can you speak to that? What is the glycemic index, or what what makes the the stevia safer? Uh, Sweet leaf, let's say specifically. All right, fine. Um, 
our powders, that is our packets and, and uh, um, shaker jars and, and the, the powdered um, stevia and that is mixed with inulin because stevia is such a, a high intensity sweetener, it really needs a carrier to uh, be able to be used conveniently. They've been checked by the University of Toronto Glycemic Index uh, Institute, excuse me, to show that um, uh, they do not they do not raise blood sugar. Uh, glucose uh, is not raised, uh, so it has a non-glycemic index, is what it has. So this is why my doctor tells me it's okay. It's the one sweetener I can use That's safely right. without raising the index. That's right. How are people taking to that? Are people really looking for an alternative to the common sugar-saturated sweeteners and the aspartames and all the other kind of artificial chemical sweeteners? Yes. Yes, more and more. Mm -hmm. People are, are understanding in the last um, three years, there has been a, a sea change in how the um, medical and scientific communities and governmental agencies look at uh, the impact of uh, sugars and artificial sweeteners uh, on the body. And uh, uh, the body can handle a little bit but it's a slim budget and uh, uh, very much less than most people ingest. Right, because you get into that insulin producing level of sweetener. I mean, the liver has to deal with it and it's turning it insulin, it's turning it to fat. Yes, and uh, now we know um, that uh, the cardiovascular system is at great risk by the ingestion of excess dietary sugars, as is the brain. That, that came out just a year ago, uh, as is the hepatic system uh, and, and the skin and premature aging and, uh, um, you know, uh, and certainly the pancreas. So uh, really the, the body is not meant for a lot of extra sugars. Yeah, well, I mean, we're grateful that someone is really at the forefront of providing people a sweetener, an option, so they don't have to ignore their sweet tooth, as it were but right. that they can do something healthier, lower glycemic index, less impactful to the body in a negative way, more consistent with nurturing, eating healthy food, as we call them. Lisa is the founder of the company. That's a good place to start. Why, why bring Moringa to the people anyway? Yeah, so my company is called Cooley Cooley. We're the first ones to pioneer Moringa here. I started eating it when I was a Peace Corps volunteer. So I was in Niger, West Africa, and it was really what just saved me and brought nutrition to my life. So now I want to bring it to everyone here. It saved you and brought nutrition to your life. So you had like a, an epiphany and a quantum shift in your thinking. Yeah, well, so I'm a vegetarian. I was in a really rural village and really all I was eating was like rice and millet. And so I just felt like I didn't have enough energy. I just couldn't, you know, couldn't do all the things I wanted to do. So I started eating moringa. Um, someone in my village handed it to me and I was like, this plant is amazing. It made me feel so much more energized. Um, and I wanted to find a way to support some of the women I'd been working with in West Africa. So this was all a humanitarian effort on your part to help people thrive. Yeah, basically, yeah. Wow, so we work nourisher. with yeah, yeah, totally. So we work with women's groups in West Africa and South and Central America to grow a moringa, partner directly with the farmers, all fairly traded, organic, and then we sell it here. Well, that was amazing. I'm kind of blown away. I am leaving the fancy food show with this bag full of actual healthy products. Again, plant-based, whole food, no sweeteners of any kind, something that would actually nourish our body, just like they were doing for themselves in the 60s, giving away food in the park like the Diggers, opening the first organic store on Haight Street. And it turns out that that tree has grown into a massive, massive thing for us all to take advantage of, because it's time to get healthy. The future is health, or there isn't one. Thanks for joining us. It's been a lot of fun at the Fancy Food Show.